and welcome to the fifth video in our water management series. This time I thought we ought to talk about cross-connection control and backflow prevention. Now some of you may not have heard of these at all and some of you may have some idea of what they mean. So let me start with an explanation of what cross-connection and backflow are all about. To get you started, let's look at some definitions. You'll need them to understand what a cross-connection control program is and why you need one in your town. Cross-connection is a connection of a potable water system to a non-potable system or a system of questionable water quality. And by the way, potable water means water that's okay to drink. For example, your town's water system is almost certainly connected to a boiler that is part of a school or other large building's heating system. That is a cross-connection and many times you have to have them. The boiler has to have water, so you automatically have a cross-connection. Now backflow is the reversal of the flow of water from its normal or intended direction of flow. Let's use animation to show how all of this works. In your water system, backflow can easily be caused by a break in one of the water lines or by the fire department turning on a fire hydrant to fight a fire. When that backflow happens, a cross connection that isn't controlled will allow the bad water to flow back into the good water in your water system. Here you see the water that's going to the school start to flow backwards. If there is an uncontrolled cross connection on the school's boiler, then the boiler water will flow back into the water system. The way to stop backflow is with a program you set up to control the cross connections. If the cross connection doesn't allow the backflow, then your drinking water stays potable. Other examples of non-potable water is the water used in a dishwasher or a sink. Actually, there are lots of examples of non-potable water, and we'll talk about many of them as we go along. Non-potable water backflowing through a cross connection into your water system is potentially quite dangerous, and it could make your water customers very sick. There is no question that you need a cross connection control program because backflow from cross connections occur every day in this country. There are many examples I could show you of potential backflow situations, including in a hospital, a mortuary, a nursing home, or a farm co-op. But let me give you a couple of simple everyday examples of backflow and cross connection. Follow me. Fred's working on his lawn today, and he agreed to help me with this. Let's assume that you've decided to fertilize your lawn, like Fred's doing here today, using one of those simple hose applicators. Now let's assume that two blocks away the fire department is fighting a fire, and the fire department uses so much water to fight the fire that the pressure in the water line here is greatly reduced. Morning, Fred. Nice day for yard work, isn't it? Thanks for helping me out with this video. You bet, Jim, no problem. Now, you wanted to put some fertilizer on your lawn today using one of these on-hose spray units, right? Yep. And then I see you're gonna mix the fertilizer in this bucket and then fill the sprayer from the bucket. Now, let's assume that Fred leaves the hose hanging in the bucket when he goes to turn on his water. This is a simple cross-connection possibility. Non-potable liquid in the bucket meets the potable water system in the hose. Now, let's also assume that Fred has opened his spigot and the water starts to fill the bucket. After a few seconds, the fire department begins to fight the fire and pulls a tremendous amount of water out of the water system. This might create a backflow in the system and let's use our animation to show how this might all work. Potentially, the water in this hose can start to be sucked backwards. This could easily pull the contents of this bucket into the water system. The backflow created by the open fire hydrant pulls the water backwards, sucking the fertilizer back into the hose and eventually into the water distribution system. So, the backflow created in the water system by the firefighting and the cross connection between the hose and the bucket contaminates the water system. But you can prevent this problem with a solid cross connection control program. A simple backflow prevention device like this one installed on the spigot at the house prevented this water from going backwards at the spigot. Thanks Fred. The lawn looks great. Okay. Now that you know what cross-connection and backflow are, you need to know what you can do to prevent contamination due to cross-connections and backflow. To solve this problem, we actually control the backflow part of the equation. 
You see, cross connections are actually part of our plumbing and water systems, and we simply can't eliminate them altogether. For example, the average toilet has cross connection. As you can see from this diagram, the potable water enters the toilet tank, and if backflow were to happen, the non-potable tank water could flow back into the potable water through cross connection. However, modern technology has given us new tools to prevent backflow in our water system. They are called backflow prevention devices and assemblies. There are two basic types, reduced pressure or a double check valve. These backflow prevention assemblies are testable to ensure they are working right. Placed at the site of a possible cross connection, they can protect the plumbing system from contamination. Placed just downstream of a water meter to an establishment, they can protect the public water system from any contamination that may occur within the entire establishment's plumbing system. Establishing a cross-connection control program in your town can be a daunting task. However, with an organized approach, you can set up an effective program. If we can do it, so can you. Let's go back to the office and talk about how to set up a cross-connection control program. Our town's clerk ought to be there and she's going to help me explain all of this to you. The first step in setting up your cross-connection control program will be employee education. You and your water employees will need to fully understand what cross-connection and backflow are why they are dangerous, and how to prevent backflow from happening. The best way to get this education will be to have your employees attend a training course that is specifically designed to teach cross-connection control practices. Next, you will have to put together a written document that will establish legal authority for the program. Get copies of these documents from other towns that already have them if you can, or you can call the Nebraska Rural Water Association. Their number will be at the end of this video. You will also need to get the approval of your town board or city council. These folks will also need some education so they understand cross-connection and backflow. I suggest you show them this video since it's designed just for you and them. Once the ordinance has been adopted, it must be implemented. This requires you to be very organized. And here are some steps you should follow. Define the responsibilities of each person involved in the program. Create a system for coordinating with other agencies. Devise a plan to educate the public. Create an efficient system for keeping records and you will need to develop various letters and notices. Working with other agencies can be a big benefit to your cross-connection control program. Be sure to touch base with your local building department to get included in their plan review process so backflow preventers can be included in the planning stage. Local plumbers can serve as extra eyes to catch problems with building plans that might create a need for backflow prevention. Working with fire officials is also very important. The installation of backflow preventers on fire sprinkler systems will decrease the water pressure and this needs to be considered in the water system design. Working closely with these officials and individuals will solve problems before they become problems and will be sure to generate some good PR for you. Educating the public about your program is required. The reason it's required is so the public understands why cross-connection control and backflow prevention are important and why some people will need to install preventers while others won't. They also won't become upset if they know the reasons behind the program. If your customers learn through your education efforts that this program is needed to ensure that they have healthy drinking water, they'll be much more understanding. Now I want you to talk to Susan, our city clerk. She's going to help you understand record keeping for your cross-connection control program. Susan's going to help explain the important parts of the cross-connection control program that she handles. Hi. Jim asked me to explain how important record keeping, prepared forms and prepared notices are in putting together a successful cross-connection control program. An active cross-connection control program will create information that must be organized and tracked. And you'll need to plan for this paperwork before your program starts up. You'll need to notify customers when preventers need to be installed, tested or returned. And you will need to track customer responses as well. 
Tracking due dates for notices will be very helpful, as will having letters and forms prepared ahead of time. Well, that's all I have. I'll send you back to Jim, who went out to check on one of our wells. Good luck setting up your town's cross-connection control program. Once you've gotten your town and program prepared, you can implement your cross-connection control program. You can start your public education to gain customer support. The operator will be ready to identify cross-connection hazards in the system, and they can begin the process of eliminating them or isolating them. As the program begins to operate, you'll be ready to handle the paper flow and the phone calls. Creating, implementing, and running an effective cross-connection control program is a big challenge. However, being organized in the beginning will help you avoid most problems and help you handle the few problems you do have. Let's review what we've covered today. We've talked about what cross-connection and backflow are and how they can occur in your water system. We've given you guidelines on the best way to design and implement a cross-connection control program and we've given you some specific tips on steps you can take to be sure you're ready to start the program and then, once it's up and running, how to keep it running smoothly. Well, I have to go check on another well. I suggest you call the Field Service Program Manager at the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services at 402-471-0521. This manager can set you up with some free on-site assistance for implementing your cross-connection control program for your town's water system. Good luck.